got my COVID vaccine. I'm feeling great. <laughs> what the hell? I just think it's so scary to think that someone could be looking at this and think that this is reality. Frustrated public health expert Corey Bosch points to social media posts like this one that riffs on COVID vaccine side effects. <laughs> it's hard to distinguish sometimes between what's reality and what's fiction. And so these types of things tend to spread very rapidly online. Bash studied videos on TikTok and other platforms and says even those that promote bizarre conspiracy theories like COVID shots make you magnetic can influence public opinion. Explain to me why the key sticks to me. That key fell off. It's obviously a bogus claim, but some of these posts go viral, Bash says. Gain a lot of traction very quickly, and it's very difficult for public health professionals to negate the negative effects of such messaging. We are not yet as a nation sophisticated enough to know how to counter that or to manage that or create shields against that. Rutgers Dean Perry Halkita says many viral posts promote more dangerous disinformation like COVID vaccines make you infertile or alter your genes like this one. And it's going to cause your body to have an immune response against every cell in your body. Things uh, that can potentially do harm to people's lives. There is a responsibility of the social media platform to actually review those things and preview them and assess them before they're posted. When you look at it in the whole, you realize that this is a very cynical marketing game. There's marketing to African-Americans, there's marketing to moms, there's marketing to people that care about wellness, there's marketing to people that care about fertility because they, they're of childbearing age. Imran Ahmed heads the Center for Countering Digital Hate, which recently identified a so-called disinformation dozen, 12 high-profile anti-vaccine influencers who Ahmed alleges produced some 65% of the viral disinformation and rake in 35 million a year promoting baseless theories for profit. What they're looking at is their bottom line. Yeah, I mean, it, I, look, I can't for sure look into the hearts of people and tell you whether they're true believers or they are purely economically motivated, but it's remarkable how much money they're able to make out of spreading this misinformation. One of Ahmed's dozen is Dr. Sherry Tenpenny, who maintains COVID vaccines somehow connect you with cell phone transmissions. They get to be defined an interface between what's being injected in these shots and all of the 5G towers. Not proven yet. She's been operating for quite some time, spreading misinformation, trying to build her market and selling false cures and false information to people. Another one of Ahmed's dozen, virulent anti-vaxxer Robert F. Kennedy Jr. He got kicked off Instagram for sharing debunked vaccine claims. Facebook and Twitter have also suspended and blocked some accounts. Misleading posts get labeled or removed by the millions. But the account operators complain they're being censored and most continue business as usual. Ahmed says 60 of the dozen's 89 accounts remain active. They have to remove these bad actors from their platforms and start creating consequences for the spreading of misinformation. Scientists could also team up with other influencers, counter the misinformation with their own online video campaigns, like NPR engineer Vic Krishna's vaccine explainer. Four cats. Seize them. 2.3 million likes. I'm Brenda Flanagan, NJ Spotlight News.